I would like to express my sincere thanks to Martin and the organizing committee, SGA, for inviting me to uh, Jedi. It's my first time in, uh, in Saudi Arabia, actually the first time I stepped on the soil of the Middle East. I really appreciate the warm hospitality of this country and also uh, the, uh, uh, the, the friendship of uh, everyone here. So I would like to bring you a little flavor from where I'm coming from. I'm coming from the Chinese University of Hong Kong, the younger and more energetic medical school in Hong Kong. Um, so this is from the Far East, and I'd like to bring you um, some of the epidemiology and, 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 and features of fatal disease in my region and see if there's anything that can match. And I'm looking forward to future collaborative opportunities with the uh, University of Saudi Arabia. So as uh, our Grand Master of Fatal Disease, so many sitting downstairs, I would like to start with your, your study. Um, that is the um, global burden of fatal disease is getting bigger and bigger. I know you try to focus your attention on the 32% of the Middle East, but I want to shift your attention a little bit to the right of the 27% in Asia Pacific. So this is the region I'm coming from. And this is the region that people think that fat and disease is not a problem. You look at my body size, I'm not fat at all. Although I'm not having fat and disease, but I'm telling you that a lot of uh, people living in my part of the world also have fat and disease, but they may not be very obese if you look at, uh, if you look at them. And that has become a more important disease because of the complications. It's not just because it is prevalent, but because it's causing problem. So this um, uh, 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 study updated the importance of fat disease as an indication of liver transplantation. It has already overtaken hep C, not just because it's rising, and also because hep C is dropping, because we have very good antiviral therapies for hepatitis C nowadays. And in America, um, uh, non alcoholic fat disease has also become an important problem, uh, etiology of cellular carcinoma. I will spend a, lot, a little bit of time at the end of my talk on the association of fatty disease and HCC in Asia Pacific uh, context. So let's come back to Asia. So how common are these diseases in Asia? If you look at all these epidemiological studies, people try to use ultrasound to screen for fatty liver disease. And you know it is not the most sensitive uh, measure, but still we see about 20 to 30 percent of non-alcoholic fatty disease in Asia. So this is definitely not just a Middle East problem, not just a Western problem, but a, also a problem in the Asia Pacific region. So in Hong Kong, we try to look into the incident level. That is a young patient who have no fatty liver disease to start with. So we use MR spectroscopy, which is a very sensitive measure, but expensive, uh, to, uh, to, to diagnose fatty disease. So 565 uh, normal people had a screening for fatty disease using MR spectroscopy. And they were diagnosed with no fatty disease to start with. We repeated the test in about three to four years, and we found that 13.4% of them had new newly developed non-alcoholic fatty disease and is about 3.4% per year. So in other words, for some pain-free people, people with no fatty liver to start with, we cannot just say that, okay, relax, you're fine, but we know that some of them may have fatty liver in the future. But fatty liver disease is a huge problem. Not everyone has the same seriousness of uh, disease. So in 922 uh, normal people gain in Hong Kong. So this is actually a screening study we, start, we started with. And we found that with fibro scan, um, only 4% of them had advanced fibrosis. That is every F4 fibrosis of fibro scan. So although we have 28% fatty disease in our population, but only a minority have advanced fibrosis. So still it's not a key health problem in Hong Kong yet, but it is emerging. If we look into histologic series, so most of us actually have this histology series, 
and this is an old study again conducted in our center in collaboration with some peripheral hospitals in Hong Kong. We try to biopsy patients who have indication for biopsy. So this is obviously biased because for those with no indication for biopsy, they are not there. And usually those are patients with milder diseases. But anyhow, if you look into this uh, population, you can see that all of them of course have steatosis. Neck bone inflammation, uh, about 20% of them have no neck bone inflammation, that is simple steatosis because it's very biased. But even among this population, we only see about 20% of our patients. 10 to 20% of patients have F3 to F4 fibrosis. So that was about 10 years ago. So still, even on histologic series, we confirm our finding that uh, advanced fibrosis is still not too common in the Asia Pacific region. But the disease will change. So this is actually a, a modeling study. Uh, it's a, it presented, uh, 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 analyzed all over the world, in, in Europe, Asia, and also uh, uh, America. And by this markup modeling model, it is expected that China is going to overtake everyone in terms of prevalence of level in the world. So right now, uh, in China, the total number of net population is about 240 million, but in, by 2030, it's going to overshoot 310 million. Although most of these patients still have F0 disease, as you can see from this map of modeling, but the tail, even it is very, very thin, but it will jump up from about 4, uh, 4 million to about six, uh, 7 to 8 million people having advanced fibrosis. So this is the emerging problem in China too. And with that problem, then uh, uh, the liver-related complication is also going to rise. So in this uh, mark of modeling, it is expected that liver-related death in China is going to go up exponentially with time, and up to 2030, it's going to be a major healthcare problem this country uh, in, in, in Asia Pacific. So this is actually a medical student project um, from, from one of our undergraduate students looking into the clinical outcome of patients of biopsy preferred level. And we always talk about liver diseases because we are pathologists. But we have to remember level is actually a metabolic disease. The commonest cause of death is still cardiovascular events. And liver events in about at the minimum five years follow up is about uh, 1.6%. And of course, this patient also can have other malignancies and also other causes um, of death. So, therefore, it's a progressive disease. Uh, I want to share with you a, a, a study that we performed in a pair biopsy study. So, some uh, uh, actually these two uh, pair biopsies were broken separated by three years. And I want to focus, you to focus on those in the yellow box, that is those patients with simple steatosis on the first biopsy. And then after three years, we re-biopsy these patients without a, any intervention. So we just give them advice that you to lose weight, you have got fat liver disease. We have not put them on any experimental treatment. And, um, and this patient will just regularly follow up in the hepatology clinic. And we found that two patients actually had the fact that reversed, so the advice is not too useful. Um, most patients still remain as fatal disease, but some of them already developed NASH, uh, three of them already developed NASH. So this is a progressive disease, and doctor's advice is not good enough to reverse the progression. So in one of the um, uh, recent review articles, actually written uh, by my colleague, Professor Vincent Wong, and also some uh, friends in uh, China and in Korea, we try to describe the possible disease progression of fat liver disease. So we know that the annual incidence is about 3 to 4% from normal liver into patients with simple steatosis. And among patients with simple steatosis, about a quarter of them may have disease progression into NASH. And then for fibrosis progression, then it may be uh, one stage in about seven years in patient with NASH, and also one stage in 14 years in a mild patient uh, with simple steatosis. And for those with liver cirrhosis, 
one to four percent of them may develop cancer cell carcinoma. But remember, uh, XCC is still possible from patients without lymphocytosis that is in patient flesh and also have to report a malnutrition of simple steatosis. So I will go a little bit deeper into this in the, by the end of uh, my talk. So, but at least we know that it is a chronic disease, it is a progressive disease, it can go to the very late stage of liver uh, 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 complication, although it is also a reversible disease that for some patients who successfully lose weight, as we just heard a talk in their retro surgery just now, then they are able to reverse uh, hepatic steatosis and also in some patients with liver fibrosis. But liver fibrosis is probably the single most important factor in uh, NASH to predict mortality. So this is a very nice performed study, 690 histologically proven natural patients from six countries in the US, Europe, and also in Asia. They formed in 12 uh, years, two patients died with CC, and you can see the overall mortality and liver mortality were closely related to the stage of liver fibrosis. The later stage of liver fibrosis, the higher the adjusted hazard ratio for uh, mortality and also liver related mortality. And in the recent meta analysis, it further confirmed uh, the, the, this finding, again putting all together the longitudinal studies uh, uh, available at the time uh, of writing. Fibrosis stage could predict XCC, cirrhotic complications, and liver related overall mortalities. And the higher the stage of fibrosis, the higher the risk of liver-related mortality. So definitely it's breast disease and fibrosis is most important. But when we look into XCC, it seems that it is uncommon. I'm sure you see a lot of fatty liver patients in your clinic, but you may not see too many fatty liver-related XCC in your uh, uh, practice. So when we look into the Asian Pacific region, these are uh, reports from uh, Japan and also from Hong Kong and we found that the uh, incidence of nephron related XCC is very low. We're talking about somewhere around 0.1% or even lower, 0.1% per year in these uh, different uh, uh, case series. So what's the reason why? Of course one reason is because it is uncommon, but there are also possibilities of underreporting. Because some of these patients, even they have level related cirrhosis, but the natural history, the fat is burned up. When we see these patients, we may not be able to identify them as having fat in them. And we often label them as pathogenic cirrhosis, although they have all other manifestations of metabolic syndrome. If you want to do a longitudinal cohort to start with the patient fatty liver and then to observe the incidence of XCC, it takes a long, long time. So it's not an easy study to do. And a lot of patients in Asia Pacific, they have a late uh, disease onset because in my generation or my older generation, obesity is not a problem in childhood. But maybe in the next generation, we will see this problem in a much earlier stage of life. One peculiar feature of level NCC is that it can present in non-scrotic liver. So this is one nice study conducted in Japan, and I want to show you that among these fat liver patients with XCC, 49% of them actually had a non-scrotic liver. And this is more common in men than in women, and even a very small proportion of them only have F1 fibrosis. So in other words, liver cirrhosis, unlike in hepatitis C and in many other uh, uh, chronic diseases, is not a prerequisite for XCC in fatty liver patients. This is data from America. 1,500 patients, 8 percent of them had nephil, and um, and they look into the proportion of patients with cirrhosis again in fatty liver patients. One third of them had no cirrhosis at the time of XCC diagnosis, and this is very low as compared to XCV, HPV, and also the chronic fatty disease. Of course, for idiopathic uh, 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 XC, uh, XCC, we cannot exclude the possibility of fatty liver disease. So besides cirrhosis, what are the factors that can lead to XCC in these uh, fat patients? Actually, we don't know. 
If you look into the um, clinical study in Japan, they try to find independent variables for network associated XCC. Of course, age is one of them. AST may reflect network information. Low blood may represent uh, uh, different cirrhosis and poor hypertension. But one factor that pops up is diabetes. And uh, many, many activity project studies show that diabetes actually increases the risk of almost all cancers, including liver cancer. So there may be an independent pathway of how diabetes or insulin resistance lead to XCC, which is independent of liver cirrhosis. So this is one uh, study we conducted again in our center in Hong Kong. Raymond Kong is our fellow from Australia, so he's now back in Sydney. To Sydney. Um, so we, we screened to about 2,000 patients uh, who have diabetes coming for complication screening. And then we screened them with viral scan, and we found that 73% of them had fatty liver disease, and 18% of them had a liver stimulus measurement over 9.6, which we define as a fund. Uh, so this is much, much higher than the general population that we have uh, uh, screened in the past, which is 28% fatty disease and 4% advanced fibrosis. So DM is definitely a risk factor. And for diabetic patients who are more obese, that is indicated by BMI over 30, they have 95% risk of fatty disease and 35% risk of advanced fibrosis as diagnosed by fibrosis. So definitely this is a big risk factor that we look for. And if you want to screen this patient with fibro scan for fatty disease and advanced disease, it's very cost effective because we're going to pick up one in four patients with therefore and one in five point six patients with advanced liver fibrosis. So now we know that there are risk factors. Cirrhosis is definitely one, diabetes is another one, they may interact with each other, but there are still a lot of unknown factors that we may not understand uh, clearly why fatty liver patients have XCC and therefore it is very difficult to design a screening strategy for liver cancer in these, in these patients. And the last one will share with you one data on the outcome of XCC with level patients. This is from Japan and you can see as compared to uh, XCC due to XCP infection, the outcome is almost the same. So, XCC due to level is not a benign condition and I want you to focus on the alpha fetal protein. Oops, oh, this is interesting. Here. Well, although this is only one single study, but it highlights that in level patients, at least in this study, AMP is not high. So, there is a possibility that the role of alpha fetal protein in, as a tumor marker in level with XCC is different from that from other part of our hepatitis and we do need other studies to confirm whether it is the case. So in summary, therefore is emerging in Asia. It is a progressive disease. It can lead to complications. And therefore with the XCC is also rapidly rising in Asia and we need more longitudinal data. A significant proportion of therefore with XCC is non-cirrhotic. We know diabetes uh, and fibrosis marker can predict XCC and liver related mortality, but future research is definitely needed for risk stratification and XCC biomarker is also needed. So last I want to introduce you to my team. So uh, the young gentleman next to me is Professor Vincent Wong. He's a true natural guy in my unit. I'm a more environment artist person. And the lady next to me is Grace Wong. So she actually take care, takes care of the big data analysis and also the fibrosis study in the Chinese University of Hong Kong. With that, I thank you very much for your attention.